Hello, welcome to First Chapter Friday. This week, I wanted to read you some of Popular, a memoir by Maya Van Wagenen. And I probably mispronounced that, I'm sorry. This was on the Lone Star list a few years ago and it was one of my favorites. Um, it was written at the time by an eighth grader. So um, it's really funny, but you'll hear kind of that middle school voice um, in the writing, but she's also a stellar writer. That's about this girl who lives in a, a Texas town in the valley, and she stumbles across this old uh, guide to be popular that was written by a model in the 50s. And she decides to do an experiment uh, to see if following that advice would really work because she didn't picture herself as somebody who was popular. You know, she wasn't necessarily an outcast. People didn't pick on her or anything but she wasn't a stereotypical popular person. So she wanted to see if the uh, advice from the 50s would actually work. So um, I'm going to start reading the first chapter. I will warn you, like I said, it was written by a middle schooler. So the voice is very middle schooler. Um, there is a, I don't want to say inappropriate, but slightly inappropriate slang term for a body part in the first paragraph. So if you can't handle that, it would be good for you to log off now. I don't want anybody to be surprised to be like, he, he, the librarian said this. Um, so when you go into the book, Betty Cornell, who wrote the guide that she does her experiment with, does a forward. I'm not going to read that to you, though. And here we go. The introduction, or how this whole thing came to be. Don't skip this part. No, really. Don't skip this part. School is the armpit of life, my best friend Kinsey once told me. Amen. My school is no exception. Walk through the scratched glass doors on that first day, and your life becomes a series of brutal and painful encounters. Being called a dick by the football player who sits near you in science. Standing in a bra and granny panties in front of your gym locker that you can't open while the girls around you giggle and point. Crying in the bathroom because you didn't know it was possible for your heart to hurt this much. There is one thing though that can help you navigate this sweaty, smelly underarm. And that is a careful understanding of how the social food chain is organized. My school's popularity scale from patricians to plebeians. 10, volleyball girls. 9, football faction. 8, rich gang members, including more popular girls who dress seductively. 7, band geeks. 6, choir geeks. 5, goth art chicks. 4, less popular girls who dress seductively. 3, pregnant teens. We have two right now, a seventh and an eighth grader. Two, computer geeks. There are hardly any. One, library nerds who read constantly and love Japanese comics. Zero, the ignored. Sixth graders. Negative one, social outcasts. Negative two, teachers. Negative three, substitute teachers. You are categorized by where you spend your time and with whom you do and do not associate. I fall into the social outcast group, the lowest level of people at our school who aren't paid to be there. I'm joined in my lowly negative digit station by my close friend and confidant, Kinsey. For the most part, it's a quiet, monotonous, invisible existence. That is, until you get noticed and preyed upon by someone in any of the tiers above you. So how do those at the top work the class system to their advantage? There are magazine articles and self-help books about what to wear, what to say, how to behave, and who to be friends with. In fact, long before I was ever born, my father picked up a book at a thrift store. The faded cover was old and torn, but there was something about it, he told me. He thumbed through the pages until he came upon the title. Betty Cornell's Teenage Popularity Guide. It was written in 1951 and was full of tips and advice on how to achieve what seemed to be the unachievable, improving one's social status. 
My dad said he found himself laughing right there in the store at some of the outdated ideas. It being an interesting piece of vintage pop culture, and he being my father, he bought it right away. For a long time, the book sat in his office, the Chamber of Curiosities, at our house in Brownsville, Texas. It was gathering dust in a cardboard box sandwiched between a World War I helmet and a carved stone skull from some tribe in Mexico. It was waiting to be discovered. As luck would have it, the book did not wait, uh, did not want to remain hidden. When my parents decided to clean out dad's office, personally, I believe they made the whole mess angrier. Mom opened the box and rediscovered Betty Cornell's book. She wasn't sure what to do with it, so she handed it off to me. Maya, caretaker of all stuff no one wants, but won't get rid of. I saw Betty Cornell's Teenage Popularity Guide as nothing more than a quirky book with advice along the lines of, don't wear makeup on your eyes, instead use Vaseline, and close your pores with ice cubes, and all girls should wear a girdle. It was written by a former teen model who promised that, with a little hard work, poise, polish, and popularity were easily attainable for anyone. Anyone? I almost laughed. That was when my mom had the idea, an amazing, terrifying, once-in-a-lifetime idea. Maya, you should have followed the advice this year, in eighth grade, and write about what happens. My immediate answer was no. I couldn't imagine anything more horrifying. Since when had I, outwardly, cared about being popular anyway? But my mom had planted a seed that day. Her comment was like one of those zits that starts out small and then gets really big and seems to never go away, no matter how many times you pop it. A few days later, I was flipping through the book yet again. I discovered this. You will only make the situation worse if you take a negative attitude. If you shrug your shoulders and say, well, after all, who cares? Basically, somebody does care. You care. You care because like everyone else on this planet, you want to be liked. You want to be popular. You want to be a girl who gets around. You want to have a crowd to pal around with, a few exciting dates, and at least one boy who thinks you're about the most terrific female ever. If you say that you don't, you are really only fooling yourself. You are certainly not fooling others. The whole universe stood at attention. Betty Cornell's book was published over 60 years ago, but somehow through the vast stretch of time and space, she saw what I secretly, desperately yearned for. More than that, she promised to help me get it. I knew my life would never be the same. And so I embark on my grand experiment. Every month of this school year, I will follow Betty Cornell's advice on one of the topics in her book. Dieting, hair, makeup, posture, and attitude, among others. No matter how embarrassing or complicated. I'll start with the easiest chapters first. The challenges that people won't notice right away. And then, month by month, I'll step it up until I'm light years away from my comfort zone. I will take notes during the school day about reactions, thoughts, and anything else that happens. Upon returning home, I will use those notes to help me remember the details and write about them in the most accurate way I possibly can. This is a fantastic literary exercise, and maybe it will help me achieve my dreams of someday being an author. Hopefully journaling about the positive and negative things that happen will be empowering, showing that they are all part of a story that has begun to write itself. Maybe it will make it less scary. I definitely have my work cut out for me. That is, if I'm not already beyond help, I am 5'2 with light brown skin that breaks out on a regular basis. I am gawky, slouchy, and just a little bit lumpy. I have non-existent hips and a chest almost as flat as the cover of Betty Cornell's book. I wear glasses and braces. I do all my clothes shopping at Walmart and secondhand stores. I spend more time on algebra than I do on my hair. And so this is the beginning of Popular. It is hilarious. And her experiences, she is so brutally honest about. Uh, it's breathtaking. And I hope you enjoy it. We have it on Sora through the district. Uh, most of your school library should have it as it was a uh, Texas Lone Star. 
and you can of course always buy it at your local bookseller or at an online place like Amazon. Happy reading!